Hi everybody, Merry Christmas, it's Pastor Caleb. I'm out here by the church and I want to show you something that we have set up out front getting ready for Christmas. You see what that is? It's a beautiful manger scene. Maybe you see some of these around in your community or maybe you even have one kind of like this at home. Maybe, maybe not this big, but maybe like a, a little miniature one. You've got a little, little baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph, maybe, maybe some shepherds. Right? You've seen these before. We call it a, a nativity or a manger scene. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the stuff that's here. Do you know what this is called? Yeah, it's called a manger. You, you probably know that. But do you know what a manger was used for? This was like a feeding bucket for animals. Yeah, so the, so the cows and the, the donkeys and the sheep maybe would would eat their food out of here. That's why we have a little bit of hay right here in, in that manger. Do you realize that that's where Jesus was born? Not in some nice hospital or a beautiful hotel or a mansion or a palace, but he's born into a feeding bucket. You know, I bet it probably smelled pretty bad. I bet you it was, had all sorts of slobber on it from the animals and maybe smelled a little bit like donkey. <laughs> yeah, not the prettiest place for a person to be born. You know, when Jesus was born, they placed him in here because he wasn't, a, he wasn't a, an adult. He was just a little baby. Did you ever think about what that really means, that Jesus was born as a baby? Like, I'm sure when you think about Christmas, you think about Jesus being born, and you, you picture the little baby Jesus, and maybe you think, oh, that's so cute, right? But did you ever think about what it really means that Jesus was a baby? I mean, Jesus is God. So he, he's the person who could hold the galaxies in his hands. He, he's the one who created the whole universe, who knows all things. And he became a tiny, weak, little baby. Like he had to learn how to talk and learn how to walk. There was a time when little baby Jesus couldn't even hold his head up because he wasn't strong enough. He was born as a, a little baby and he had to grow up just like you and me. He was born as a human being just like you and me. Have you ever thought about this, that, that the age you are now, there was a time when Jesus was your age, had to learn the things that you learn, had to go through the things that you go through, had to face temptations like the temptations that you face? That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Why was Jesus born as a baby? I mean, God was, God was sending Jesus on a rescue mission, wasn't he? He was sending him on a rescue mission to rescue people from their sins. So why did he send him as a, as a baby, right? Why doesn't he send him down like a superhero, maybe with like an Iron Man sort of like superhero landing entrance or something like that? Why doesn't he send him down like Iron Man or Thor or Spider-Man, you know, like powerful hero? Well, I think the fact that Jesus was born as a baby it tells us a little bit about the type of hero, the type of savior that Jesus came to be. Jesus wasn't going to come to, to lead armies or to, to be a big, powerful hero that would beat up the bad guys. But Jesus came to be like one of us so that he could save us. He came to, to be like you and me and have to live a regular life like you and me so that he could eventually take that life and give it up for us on the cross. Jesus sent a little baby that would eventually be crucified. And a lot of times when we think about what amazing thing Jesus did for us, we think about the cross. And that's, that's the great thing to think about. I'm glad you think about that when you think about what Jesus did for us. But maybe on this Christmas, you can think, Jesus became a baby for me. Jesus became weak and powerless and a little human being for me. He went to such great lengths and was willing to give up so much to save me and to save you because he loves you. So the next time you see a manger scene like this, I don't want you to just think, oh, how cute. Oh, what a cute little baby. I want you to think, wow, God became a baby because he loves me. God loves me so much that he was willing to do that. That's what Christmas is all about. It's about God's love for us. God sending his son Jesus on a rescue mission for us. 
And I'm excited to hear a, a bunch of songs from you guys about Christmas and some readings. And uh, so let's get excited to hear some music, to hear some readings, and to hear you guys tell us again the story of Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul praises the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed.
those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, begins a story of a baby. A mother, you should know. His daddy's name was Joseph, and Mary was his mom. This baby was so special, he was God's only son. gathered round him, rejoiced and praised his birth. For the babe, the king named Jesus, is our savior here on earth.
All right, friends, let's, let's close this beautiful service with a prayer. Will you fold your hands with me? We'll direct our thoughts to our God. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for doing all this stuff that we hear about on Christmas so that we could be saved. Help us to remember that Christmas isn't just about the lights and the decorations and the presents and, and the fun stuff like that, but it's really about your love and, and how much you loved us and what you're willing to do for us. Help us to remember that this Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's, let's close with the, the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Hope you guys have a great Christmas. Thanks for all the songs and all the energy. And I hope you have a happy new year as well.